Hi viewers, Ben with SkyFi Audio in Glenrock, New Jersey. It's the end of March 2024, and it's been a long, long time since we've done one of these new arrival videos at the shop. We've been super, super busy, but we finally got caught up, and we're going to have some time today to walk through all the new stuff that's come in. So I'll take some time on each piece. This is going to be a pretty long video. Um, we're going to get started here in Bay 1. So many of you may already be aware we became an official Techniques dealer in 2024, and we've been loving it so far. For any of you that have purchased a Techniques turntable from us, thank you so much for your business. We really appreciate it. And if you're in the market for a new turntable or a piece of electronics and you're considering Techniques, we'd encourage you to give us a look. So let's start out here with the SL1500C. This is our entry-level offering from Techniques for turntables. This comes pre-mounted with a Ortofon Red cartridge. And it comes in three finishes, white, black, and silver. All of them look stunning. So this is a great entry-level table if you want something that's just easy to set up and you can get going quick and it looks nice. If you want to take a step up to something a little bit better, we've got the SL1200GR or our favorite, the SL1200G. This is such a good table. We, we love this on, on every level. There's really not a whole lot to complain on about this turntable. If you're okay with direct drive, it's it's kind of really as good as it gets, unless you want to go up to the next tier, which is what we have here at the top of Bay One, the SL1000R. This is a turntable that's more geared toward the high-end audiophile market. It has an external speed controller, very solid plinth. The plinth is almost, I think, almost 90 pounds. It's crazy. Really, really good build quality, excellent finishes. Look at that platter. It's super, super cool. So the, the connection for the tone arm is DIN, so you can use your own aftermarket cabling for that, and it has provisions for up to three tone arms. So you can see kind of a little cutout there for the tone arm section. There's another slot where you can remove this blank on the side and do a tone arm on the side and one on the back. So a really cool turntable if you're looking for a high-end custom build. These are super customizable uh, in, in every regard. We've got a couple Hi-Fi Rose pieces here. We're also a Hi-Fi Rose dealer. If you're looking for a new way to get digital audio into your system, these are an excellent choice. And then just a sampling of some of the, the Techniques product here. This is their integrated amp, the, the bigger of the two that we have. The other one is on our test rig, which I'll show you in a minute, but we love this new integrated amp from Techniques. I love the sound of this amp. We use it for almost all of our Klipsch demos and it just really makes the, the Klipsch Heritage line sing. So we're very happy with the Techniques product so far, both the audio electronics and the turntables. We're using the smaller integrated here at the test rig at the moment. Also a very nice piece. One of the things we like about this is we can toggle the phono stage between moving magnet and moving coil. So that's nice for checking out Techniques turntables as we calibrate them. So that's, uh, that's Bay One and the new Techniques product. Let's get started on some of the used stuff. So I have a stack here of some Pass Labs equipment. This is an X1 preamp and a pair of X600 monoblocks. The monoblocks are 600 watts each. The preamp is fully balanced and it's a two-piece design. So the bottom chassis is a power supply and the top chassis is where all the um, input selection and stuff is. So it's fully balanced and then it has a remote control output for controlling the power amplifiers. These are not quite ready yet. We thoroughly go through everything here when it comes in, and if any issues are identified, we get everything sorted before they get listed. So the X1 works really, really well, but the VFD is dim from being powered on for, for many years. So we're going to go ahead and replace the, the display on it and get it looking really, really nice before this gets listed. And then I need to do some more troubleshooting on the X600s. One of them does not make full rated output power. So we're going to get these both repaired and healthy before they get listed. So if you're interested in either of these, let us know so that we can get your, your name on file to let you know as soon as they're repaired. Okay, let's go over to the photo queue here. And the pieces that you see here are all going to be listed very soon. This is stuff that has already been gone through and we just need to take the pictures and get it listed. So starting from the top, we have a pair of little ProAct bookshelves. We're big ProAct fans here. These are the Super Tablet. So if you're looking for a nice little bookshelf speaker for your office or something like that, these are great. Next to them, we have a CD player from Primaire, Primary. I'm not super experienced with this brand, so I'm probably butchering the pronunciation. This is a CD32. 
The interesting thing that I noticed about this player on the bench is that it's an upsampling CD player. So when you connect this to a DAC, it actually comes in at 96 kilohertz when you're listening to Redbook, which is kind of cool. On this shelf, I have a couple of Audio Prism power conditioners. These are just nice basic uh, no frills power conditioners get you a lot of outlets and do some, some filtration so that you're not having excess noise on your power line. Next to that, we have a VPI Aries Scout. And this is one where uh, if you want to at the time of purchase, you can select a cartridge from our stock and we can mount and calibrate this for you. Next to that, we have a L12 reproduction cabinet. This is by, I believe, a guy named Rocha. Very nice custom walnut veneer cabinet. If you're looking for something that's a little bit more finished than the typical uh, matte cabinet that we see here that's got a little bit of patina and wear, something like this is going to look very clean in a modern Mac system. Underneath that, we've got a Sony S9000ES. This is a CD, SACD player. It also plays DVD, but usually when we sell these, it's mostly for somebody that's going to be listening to Redbook CD. They can play SACD, but they, they get a little bit spotty over the years. This one is working fairly well. It can play most single, single layer SACDs, but with these players, we never know how long that's going to last. So this is mostly going to be a, a Redbook machine for the, for the near future. Looks like we have an Ortofon Quintet Blue and a little headroom headphone amplifier back here. I think we're just waiting on, on new photos for that. This Sony is just, just uh, something we've got listed and I just have to take a couple new pictures of it so I won't go into that. What's here? This is a Levinson number 380S. Come on. I'm filming this in the morning. It's a little bit dark so having some trouble seeing some of these serial or model numbers. Uh, this preamp has already been serviced. It's, I think it was done, let's see. I'm just gonna look for a date here on the service receipts. Here we go. 2019. So this thing was fully recapped in 2019. We've got some internal pictures of the work. It was done really well. And this preamp is testing excellent. Next to that, we've got one of our favorites, the Max C2200. Usually when these preamps come in, the meters are discolored. So we go through and replace a lot of the, the metering components to refresh the plastics that have been damaged by the incandescent lights. So we've gone ahead and done that here and then also converted it to LED. So it makes this a uh, little bit older C2200 look kind of like the newer product. So we love this preamp. It uses eight uh, uh, dual triode tubes, so a fully tube preamp. Next up, we've got a Creek Evolution 50A. This is a little compact integrated amplifier with a modular DAC card. So this thing has a built-in DAC and also a tuner. So this is kind of a good all around. This would pair up well with something like those little pro acts on the top to get you a, a very compact system for an office or something. This also just came in. Macintosh MP1100, excellent phono stage. One of the things that is unique about this phono stage is it has an ADC built in, so it will actually give you a digital output from your vinyl, which is kind of cool. My thought is that this was probably originally meant to be paired up with a D1100 back in the day. This also just came in. This is a single owner MCD550 in excellent condition. The way we judge the condition on this era of players is by the brightness of the volume control VFD. Uh, it looks like this was a very low hours unit. Uh, so if you're looking for a Mac CD player, this is a great option. And then speaking of Mac, we have another very cool product here. I believe this is the Mark IV, if I'm not mistaken. This is an MC275 with the uh, inline terminal blocks instead of the binding post and balanced inputs. So this is one of the transitional MC275s. Very, very nice unit. All the MC275s are excellent. And what else down here? We have a Monster, I think it's an AVS if I'm not mistaken. AVS 2000. This is an interesting power conditioner. Its main function is to keep the mains voltage stable. So there's actually a motorized variac inside of this unit. So as the, as the outlet 
um, as the power at your outlet changes and fluctuates in voltage, it will actually spin a variac motor to keep the power constant, which is which is really the correct way to do it if you are in a high current situation. This is, so this would be great for managing power for uh, for high current power amplifiers and stuff like that. So cool product from Monster. And then leaning up against the side here, uh, we have a, a pretty cool turntable isolation base. I forget who makes this. I took the box out the other day, but um, if you recognize that and are interested, that should be listed very soon. Okay, on this table over here, we have a Magnum Dynalab MD90, I believe. Yeah, MD90, so this is an evolution of the famous FT-101. Nice tuner from Magnum Dynalab. This is a really neat Pioneer Elite CD player. This is the PD-65. This caught me off guard the first time. This is actually one of the players where you put the CD in upside down. It's got a really nice rigid platter. We really like these uh, Pioneer Elite players from this era. Over on the test rig, have another product we really like here. We've had a few of these. This is the MyTech Brooklyn DAC. And I think Fernando actually has one of these hooked up at his workbench. What we really like about these is it puts a ton of features in a very compact chassis and it's kind of modular. So um, on the back here, there's actually an input for an external 12 volt power supply here. So you can put a aftermarket power supply on this and then you can configure the, the inputs, the RCAs to either be line level or phono. It's got a headphone amplifier built in, it's a DAC. It's kind of a little bit of everything. So this is kind of a good uh, piece to have in your toolbox, you know, just to use as an everyday DAC. But if say you have an issue with your preamp or something like that, one day you can sub this piece in. So these are just great to have around and they're very well designed. They just use a regular Apple remote for the remote control. So they're super basic. They have a lot of information that, dis that appears on the display to kind of tell you what what bit rate you're at, what volume level. Very neat piece from my tech. All right, let's move on to the island. This is going to be a little bit intimidating. We have so much equipment here. I'm gonna start with cabling. Um, we at SkyFi here are more into the type of product like this and don't get super excited about cables. So sometimes we get a little bit backlogged on cabling. So this is a ton of very nice audio interconnects and power cables that we just have not had time to list yet. So these will be coming soon. I'm going to just do a, a, slow, a slow scroll through all of these labels so that you can see if there's anything that you recognize here that you've been looking for. Just give us a shout by email and um, we can move this up the line and get these listed for you. Oops, that one, I, that one I haven't figured out what it is yet, so I put a big question mark on it. Okay, that's all the cabling. Now let's move on to the gear. Before we take a look at the rest of the equipment at the island, I did want to quickly go over these interesting racks that came in. These are from a company called Grand Prix Audio, and they feature a lot of materials that are used in the construction of race cars. So if we look at this front panel, the main structure of these shelves, this is actually made out of carbon fiber. So it's, it's so thin you can see through it, but it, it makes for an extremely strong structure. And then the metal supports here all linked together at these points. And then at the bottom, these nice spike feet. Each of the shelves is suspended on a variety of sorbethane pads. And you can see even on the same shelf, it might use two different sized pads. And there's outlines in the manual about how to place these for certain weighted components and things like that. But the overall structure, it feels really good as far as uh, like vibration absorption goes. It has this kind of elastic feel to it. And I wouldn't hesitate to put a turntable on that top shelf and you know, jump around in the room. I think it would do a very good job at isolating that, uh, that motion. So very cool racks. This is the configuration that we're selling these in. They can be kind of stacked into different layouts, but this is what the, the model numbers on the base platforms indicate the configuration would be. So these ones can be used kind of like an amp stand. Uh, these actually came in with those big monoblocks that I showed you, the, uh, the past 600 watt monoblock. So you could hypothetically put a big monoblock power amp in there and then another component on top of that and then do a whole system here 
we're going to be selling these as three individual pieces. So if you've been looking out for a set of these, they're very expensive and this could be a big cost savings for you if you're not too concerned about the little you know, marks and scratches that might be in the acrylic shelves and that. So give those a look if you're interested in setting up a new audio rack for your system. Let's start out with the set of vacuum tubes here. These are all seven DJ8s. These are uh, all Siemens tubes. These ones have been rebranded Telefungin. They all test near new old stock on the Amplitrex AT1000, and a lot of them have very similar date codes. So this is all gonna be sold as a set. So if you've got an, an amp that uses uh, six DJ8, this might be a fun thing to experiment with. A couple of these are true NOS, still sealed, and then we have a couple of Muller E88CCs down here as well that they don't test new old stock, but they are very strong and again, similar date codes. Over here we have an Allnick T1500 Mark II. This is a single-ended 300B amplifier. This tested pretty well at the bench, but one of the tubes is weak, one of the output tubes. We've got a new set of EH300Bs coming in for this. So that's a Olnick, if you're interested, these usually sell pretty quickly. Over here, I have a custom preamp built by Eric Audio. This is called the Motherload 2. Normally, this does not come in maple. This was a special request to have it built in flame maple. And it also has a balancing transformer at the input, so you can have one balanced input and then single-ended for the rest. So this is a two-piece design with a regulated tube power supply. So we've got a tube rectifier and then two gas voltage regulators. So these glow kind of purple when the unit is on, which is really cool. And then it uses a Cosmo volume control with remote. So very nice, simple, I think it's 6SL7, if I remember correctly. Where are we? Yeah, oh, 6SN7. So uses a couple 6SN7 tubes for the preamp stage. Very nice preamp and the Cosmo is an excellent volume control. I'm sure we have some Shindo fans in our viewer list. These are the F2A Sinhonia, I think is how that's meant to be said. And this uses a very specific Siemens output tube. Uh, very, very cool power amplifiers. We've got these all biased up and ready. We did some long-term testing on these and they sound as good as they look. This is handcrafted Japanese stuff. We really like the Shindo product. And then we haven't seen 1960s Marantz in a while here. It's a little bit refreshing. So this is a Marantz 7, not the 7T. This is the all tube version. So this one, these have both been serviced in the past, uh, but do have some issues. We're going to do a, a SkyFi style power supply rebuild on this guy, get that all really stable for the long term. And then the, the 8B needs a little bit more work, but this is fundamentally up and running. I got, I got this to pass audio signal the other day. So we just need to go through and, and do a um, electronic restoration on this. So it's ready for long-term use. So if you're in the market for an 8B, it's not the best cosmetically, but it should turn out really nice when we're done. Next up, we have an extremely customized uh, Thorns TD-124. Everything that you could possibly think of has been customized on this. It's got a custom platter, custom mat, custom plinth, custom feet. Right now there's a arm board on it that has a Thomas Schick tone arm on it. As a LDA speed controller. It was originally um, brought to us with a Soundsmith strain gauge cartridge on it. This is a an super interesting cartridge from Soundsmith that runs using a device called a strain gauge, which is like a highly sensitive scale. So it, it's really a different, a completely different way of, of getting the signal out of the groove. So that's a really interesting product we're gonna have some fun experimenting with. So this, I think we're going to do a little bit of modification on this table to kind of give it the, the SkyFi touch. So look out for this soon. This is going to be a really neat TD-124 when it's done. I'm going to kind of gloss over this piece here. This is an MD, MD, or sorry, MS-750 for Mac. This is a music streamer. This is in our repair queue. We don't know how far we're going to go with it. It's kind of an obsolete product. Uh, the, the, the music streamers like the Hi-Fi Rose I showed you in the first bay are going to do a much better job than a vintage Mac piece like this. But if you want that Mac look, that may be interesting. But again, I don't know how much time we're gonna spend on that guy. 
For Mac, this is much more interesting here. I have a couple of stacks from two different eras here. This is an MR77, C28, and MC2105 that are all going to be gone through. This whole set is complete with original boxes and manuals. So that's, that's kind of unique. They all need a little bit of work, so those are gonna be a little while out. This stack, however, should be almost completely running. This MR78 here was serviced by Richard Modafferi. Um, we haven't tested this yet, but this guy, I wouldn't be surprised if it performs perfectly. Uh, Richard does excellent, excellent work on, on tuners up at Audio Classics. Um, this is a C32. We really like this preamp from Mac, but it has a, a fatal design flaw, which was ribbon cables on the inside that tend to deteriorate and fail. So as you service it, it kind of self-destructs. The, the ribbons turn to dust and, and the thing just stops working. But luckily this has been serviced in the past and someone has done a full re-ribbon job on this. So this should be a really stable preamp. Again, haven't tested this one yet, but I fully expect this to work really, really well. This 2205, I recently finished a full rebuild on it. It's got all new output transistors, all new caps. I just have to work out a one final issue with my power guard lights. So once that's sorted, that's going to be listed. If you're looking for a 2205, this is a nice clean one. I believe we have new glass on it. I have to check my notes, but a couple really nice sets of Mac here. We might have shown this one before. I was waiting on a knob to come in for this and it just came in the other day. So this should be listed very shortly. This is an MC252 from the faceplate era where they did kind of this 3D design on the faceplate. Um, so that will be coming soon. We also have an MA6900 in the repair queue here. This is on our priority list. So we'll be getting to this as soon as possible. These Mac integrated amps are highly desirable. So we usually move these to the top of the list and do them first. Back here near the turntable rig, I have a Counterpoint SA2000 and another De Sequera. I believe this is the FM reference. This thing works really well, but the CRT is dead. So we need to come up with a either a replacement C, uh, CRT or figure out what's going on there. So an excellent tuner in good functional condition, except for the most important part, the CRT. So we'll be working on getting that up and running. And then this counterpoint up here is, an, uh, is a tube design. I think it might be a hybrid. I haven't done much research on this piece yet, but it fundamentally works. I just need to go through and clean it and give it a good once over. So. Nice preamp from Counterpoint. Let's head over to Bay 3. We've got a lot of speaker work going on right now. We've been focusing a lot on the brands that we really like. So we've been taking in some used Klipsch and some used JBL. So let's start off on the left here. This is a set of early 4311s. These have all Alnico or Alnico magnets in them. So it's a nice early set. We've got a little bit of cabinet work to do here, but these should turn out okay. This is a set of very early L100s with the inline drivers, again, all set up with Alnico magnets. So this is a very desirable set of L100s that will be in the queue. Then a set of KG4s. We haven't done a whole lot with this series yet for Klipsch, but they, uh, they sound pretty good and they look nice too. So those will be coming up. Also for Klipsch, we just got this set in yesterday and are pretty excited about them. This is a set of Forte 2s. The last set from this era that we had in was a quartet and me and Elliot just loved the sound of them. So we're hoping that, that these are uh, have a similar sonic character, the Forte 2, and these have the original boxes. So if you've been considering Forte and you don't wanna fork out the, the money for the brand new heritage, this might be a good option for you. And then finally, we're working on a set of Eggleston Works Andra 2s here. We've got the, the woofers pulled um, to go out for, for refoam. They'd completely deteriorated. So we'll be getting these up and running soon. And then to finish out, I've got a few things going on in Bay 2. So you've seen probably in the past Fernando's videos on the 4343. This is a set of 4345s. So they're even bigger even better and we just finished going through a light refurb on them the woofers were repaired by audio classics i think about five years ago but the mid ranges were not in good shape so we ended up getting those redone and our speaker guy did an excellent job the mid ranges look near perfect 
So this is going to be a very nice set of 4345s. And also, if you look on the bottom, you'll see there's a custom base that's been installed on these. So a, a woodworker made a, you know, a decorative base that has uh, casters on so they can be kind of wheeled around fairly easily. So that's a set of 4345s. And then in the middle, we just had these come in. This is a LAM M2.1, or, or sorry, ML2.1. So this is a pair of mono blocks that use a pair of 6C, 33C tubes in push-pull. These make about 18 watts into whatever load you are using. And this is just a really, really awesome, nice sounding pair of mono blocks. And we've got the original crates, all the paperwork, and these have actually been factory serviced very recently. So if you've been thinking about lambs, this is kind of as good as it gets. I think that about wraps it up. Thanks for coming along for this tour of the shop and all the new product. And we're looking forward to a productive spring. Thanks again for stopping by the channel. You can visit us at skyfiaudio.com to get more info on any of these products. And we'll catch you on the next one.